people were in awe. I believe people were in awe at that at my vocal ability at such a young age. I mean, um, but I was still in in a small community, you know. Michael Jackson was the only one back in the day that I'd known that had, you know, been such a been, been a kid at nine or five years old that had been in the limelight. And so I was just in a small community. So when people would hear that I could sing and I would win talent shows and, and, and win certain things, and I was actually singing the national anthem at, at the you know high school basketball games and, and I was doing other things, you know, they just really was like, that's that young, that's the young guy that can sing, you know? Um, and it was fine, it was fun. I mean, to be acknowledged, uh, but it wasn't enough. You know, I just felt like I needed to find people who were kind of like me. And my grandmother helped a lot with that. She sent me to a place called Freedom Theater. And Freedom Theater was a place that focused on dance, arts, uh, singing, uh, acting, creative writing. And she sent me there and uh, spent a whole summer there. And I actually spent a summer there and then a school year there, but I was still going to school. Um, and... It was just, it was funny because there were people there who were talented. I'm talking talented in all the things that they were doing. But for some reason, they still wasn't as talented vocally as I was. Not, you know, by the grace of God. I'm just going to say by the grace of God, I was still different. But I found people who actually, kids who were actually as passionate about artistic expression as I was, which made me feel like I fit. And uh, Freedom Theater became my, my home for a minute. You know, I would go there, it would be recreational. Um, I'd stay out of trouble. When my, my homeboys was doing drugs, I'd be, you know, at Freedom Theater, you know, or selling drugs while they was breaking into, into uh, while they were breaking into warehouses and grabbing spray paint to, to tag up a building, I was at Freedom Theater doing, you know, uh, a class or something like that. So my grandmother always wanted me to stay outside of the projects. And um, that was one of the years that uh, I moved. Well, I actually moved out of the projects and went to a magnet school, which was another place where everybody felt like I was different. When I went to... Uh, Freedom Theater, you know, uh, at the time, Fame, the TV show Fame was out, and I would go to Freedom Theater, and I would rush home, and I would watch Fame, and I just loved the fact that there was kids dancing and singing in a hallway, and, you know, they would be in class, but then they'd leave class and then jump down the stairs real high and go into, like, a little dance step, or somebody would always be singing, and I was like, is there really a school like this? I, I didn't know if that was, um, if there was a school like that. I was going to a school in Roxborough called Levering Junior High. It was like elementary to junior high. And they, the high schools were coming to actually recruit kids to come to their schools. And, you know, we would have like little seminars and I would sit there and, you know, one school would come, you know, another school would come, Dunbar would come. Uh, you had, uh, you know, Alney High School would come and, you know, the other, other just a lot of high schools. And the lady said, well, tomorrow uh, we're going to have the high school for creative and performing arts come. And I was like, okay, well, I might as well go to this one too. So, you know, I'm going to, high, I'm going to high school. So I sat there. And when I sat there, I heard the lady basically talking about the school and how arts are important. And you have choir, we have writing, creative writing, dance. And it was like Freedom Theater, but high school. You know what I mean? So I was like, wait a minute. You're telling me I could go to high school, learn a curriculum, and still do the arts at the same time? I said, my mom. When I got back, I said, my mom, that's the school I want to go to. I want to go to the high school for creative and performing arts. So when I went there, I remember going to my audition. And when I got there, it was like fame. There was kids 
dancing in the hallway. They were doing the pirouettes and trying to do, because everybody was auditioning. So they were actually getting themselves together, ready for their audition. And I didn't have a piece that I that that I learned. I didn't have a I didn't couldn't read music. I couldn't do anything. So I went in there and I sang the greatest love of all. And I got in. All I had to do was get good grades, and that was probably the hardest thing to do because I wasn't an academic dude. I just was a singer. While people was again in school, while you were doing your tests or doing your homework or doing your classwork, I'd be the one in my mind humming something that was probably not important at the time. <laughs> so I originally attended the High School for Creative and Performing Arts for vocal music major. I, it was just, it was evident. Uh, when I got there, I heard people singing. I heard that, that there was, you know, th this was the place to be. And it's crazy because the first day of school, I remember sitting in class and the choir teacher came and he came in he tapped the tapped the you know the table, and he said something in in Latin, and everybody in the class that had been there the year before, they knew what it was, and he said one, two, three, four, boom, and the choir just, it was oh my goodness, it was amazing, it was the harmony, the 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 movements, the melodies, the, everything just meshed, and I couldn't believe it that I'd found the Xavier School of the Arts. I promise, I felt like I was in the X-Men when I think about it now. And it, it just was like, I, I left there at all, in awe. I left, I left that day in awe. I got on the trolley and I was riding all the way up the street because the, the 23 trolley rode all the way up to my house. And I remember sitting there like, I can't believe it. I can't wait to go back to school the next day. And this is what happened when I went back to school the next day. I remember sitting in class. I got there early, uh, a vocal uh, music class choir, and the teacher wasn't there yet. Nate was behind me, uh, a guy named Mark Nelson, uh, a, guy, a guy named George Baldy, uh, John Schultz, and Marguerite Walker. And they were behind me, and I heard them count off. What's your time? And the harmony that these five people had melted my heart. And I just wanted to be a part of it. So I followed them around everywhere they went. I followed them around. And at that time, that was the group. That was actually the beginning group of Boys to Men, but they were called a whole nother name, a whole nother group. So Nate, the year before, when he saw me audition, he had already recruited me, but I didn't know. But this was his way of drawing me in, you know what I mean? And I just couldn't get enough of it. Uh, everywhere I went, I wanted to hear them, and they have just the baddest singers. And I felt like there were people there who could do exactly what I was doing, if not even better, with their voices, which made me want to become better. Nate created the singing group, which was called Unique Attractions. Uh, him and Mark Nelson, they got with uh, every year, there would be people that would come into the group and people that would leave because they would graduate. Um, the year that I came in, they recruited me. I was the youngest, I was freshman. And I would, they gave me my part because I guess the guy a year before, he left and went to college. So they gave me my part and I used to walk around Philadelphia and just sing with them. You know, we were called Unique Attraction. And um, no shows or anything like that. We would perform at maybe like the talent shows or something that would be that would be showing and or a premiered in school, and um, the next year Mark Nelson left and it was just Nate and myself, and uh, we had a couple you know other people that were there John Schultz and you know, but and and we had a female female vocalist as well and they could all sing I'm talking about incredible, but as the years progressed they would go away to college. By the last year, it was me, Mark Nelson, Sean Stockman, and Nate. So it was four of us. And we would just sing harmony. Mark moved away. And then it was just me, Sean, and Nate for a minute. And then he came back. But when he came back, he didn't have anywhere to live because he was, he was living in California. He came back. He didn't have anywhere to live. So he moved in with Mike, which was the bass singer. 
he would actually, you know, kind of like help Mike out a little bit vocally here and there. You know, Mike wanted to be a part. So, you know, he would give him a couple of ideas here and there. And one day we're in the bathroom and uh, the acoustics in the bathroom were incredible. It smelled like urine, but that was the best place to sing. And we started singing and Mike came into the bathroom. And when we hit a certain part in Can You Stand the Rain, sunny days, sunny days, everybody loves now. Once we got to that part, Mike added that sunny day it was so deep so filled with foundation that it made it sound magical and we fell in love with that magic and we started going forward from that point we started just singing everywhere doing new tech talent shows and this place and that place we would have little shows that we would do here and there but we were still a local group there were a couple of other local groups as well but we were the ones that could actually sing they were cool. We were better. We knew it. We went to the high school for creative and performing arts. It's like, you know, you're learning all of this music. There's no way you can't integrate what you're learning in school into real, real talent.